Hi, my name is Jim Moyle and welcome to episode 4 of our image management series. Now I don't know if you've noticed, but all we've been doing in the first three episodes is getting the latest image and then copying it all around the world. Today we're going to do something a bit more useful and we're going to install some applications as part of this process. Let's have a look at what's changed. Our deploy template script is exactly the same. Here are the current variables that we've got at the top of that script. I haven't changed that from episode three. And if we look at our template JSON, the only thing I've changed is the customized section that we can see right in front of us. And instead of running inline PowerShell, what we're doing is we're downloading from my GitHub a PowerShell script, and then we're gonna run that script. I like doing it this way because that way I can code and have um, all the, the help in terms of um, script, analyzer, script analyzer and linting, etc., in PowerShell and then version controller in my uh, GitHub repo. And also I can change my application installation scripts without changing my um, uh, Azure template. All right. Let's have a look at what it is I'm running. Well, what I'm gonna do is grab not just the latest version of the image, but I'm gonna try and grab the latest version of a whole load of applications. And I'm gonna do that with a community PowerShell module called Evergreen. Now, I love Evergreen, and you should too. And let's have a quick look at um, the commands from that, uh, that module. You can see that what it's doing is getting a whole lot of information about some very common desktop virtualization applications. So if I do get Microsoft FS Logics apps, we can see it returns a version a date and a URI. Now that URI is to the vendor. And if I did get Zoom, we've got the latest versions for all of the types from Zoom and those are direct download links to Zoom. So we can use this module to always grab the latest possible installation media for our platform. So this prep section to our customize effectively runs this prep script. And all we're doing is allowing access to the PowerShell gallery and then we're installing Evergreen from the PowerShell gallery. Great stuff. Let's have a quick look at an example of, a, of an application install. Now, <clears throat> we're just gonna uh, write output um, just to tell people that we're starting. In that prep, we did build, uh, we did create the directory. I've just put a check there just to make sure that directory is there. We're gonna use Evergreen to get all of those versions for uh, Git for Windows. And then we're gonna run uh, <clears throat> the sort and select from, uh, PowerShell to get the most recent version and then we're going to filter again to get all of the packages which are on that version and then we're going to get which of the packages on that version we want so for our particular environment we would like a 64-bit exe please we're going to grab the file name and configure that as the output if that file doesn't already exist, then we're gonna download it, and then we're gonna install it, and then we're gonna clean up afterwards. Um, that installation <coughs> line, um, this one isn't an MSI. You'll have to go and uh, look at the documentation for, uh, for the individual application as to what their silent and no reboot options are. In this case, very silent, no restart. Um, MSI would be um, quiet, no restart, I think again. But you have to look at it for the individual application. 
We've also got a couple of test outputs. Now the documentation for AIB says that you should use write host. I hate writing host and so should you. Um, I wanted to see what information I could put into the log file and how that would look. And here's another test just to see if I can get everything into, uh, into the log file. Now the log file, as you probably know, is in the staging resource script. This is one I previously deployed. Here's the storage account. And then into the containers, into packer logs, into the folder, and there's the log file that is produced by Azure Image Builder. And we can download that at any time and, and look and see what's going on. So we're going to put stuff into the logs. Um, as you can see, we're going to do Teams, VS Code, FS Logics. We're also going to do um, something called BizF, which is the Base Image Script Framework, another community effort. This is a um, tool to seal your images after you've configured them. And let's have a quick look at something uh, here. And this will show us some of the features that uh, BizF will give us. Very, very handy for sealing your image ready for deployment brand new. Even just resetting the performance counters, right? So you're not getting stale information from the VM where you um, originally set up the master image. You know that all the performance counters are correct. And, um, and you know, deleting the event logs, resetting them so, uh, so on deployment, you're not getting historical um, items. There's a whole lot of stuff in here for Citrix and VMware, not just for WVD as well. So if you're a Citrix or a VMware shop, then this is also perfect for you. There's a couple of things that I'm gonna need as well when we're deploying. Here is a little function just to go and grab that log file. I'm going to give it the storage account name. I've tried in the past just looking for the storage account name and it's been a bit tricky sometimes. It doesn't come back with get az account. Um, so great using the storage account name is, is a guaranteed result to, to download that um, log file. We've also got a function to grab the um, status of the deployment and in the log file if you look for packer out then that will make it a lot less verbose and a lot easier to understand and I've got a stopwatch and we'll see how long things will take and and, uh, and when I'm fast forwarding in the edit you'll be able to see what's happening in the background so let's start our deployment and we'll see about how all of these um, things interact. So what we will do first is we'll start our stopwatch and then we'll start our deployment. We'll probably lose our stopwatch a couple of times along the way. I'll try and remember to bring it back up as soon as I can. And let's have a look at our status. Now, it says deleting there because we've still got the old um, image template in our resource group. So before we did deploy a new one, it's gonna automatically delete the previous one. Until that's done, we won't have a log file. So we'll just, uh, we'll just wait till that's done. And now we're starting and we're, as you can see, we're, we're creating that image template. And we need to wait until we say building before we can go and have a look at the log file. And now we look like we're, uh, we're building. We've also had the thread finish in our PowerShell. So we know that that has been completely submitted. And we've got a new staging resource group. 
and we've got a storage account name that we can grab here because what we want to have a quick look at is this log file. So let's feed the log file into our function to get the download it from our storage account. And we're actually going to put it in a place where I can have a look at it with our um, configuration manager trace log tool. The great thing about this tool is that it will update as we're going along. So every time I download it every five seconds, um, the log tool will update with all of the new information. And we can see we've got um, ARM uh, deployment there. Now remember in the monitor tools, I said that the log file is a bit verbose. I've actually got a filter here, so if we take that filter out, it's far too verbose. The stuff we want to look like is instead of these packet ERIs, packet out. So as long as we do contains there, then we're going to be following exactly what we need to follow. Now I'm going to fast forward all of the waiting time here. You'll see on the stopwatch what's happening. And um, in the edit, I'll put some text up to, uh, to explain what's going on. I'll speak to you when we're all done. So now that we have finished that distribution of the image to the shared image gallery, let's have a look at that image inside the shared image gallery. And uh, we can see we've got our new version here. And what we'll do is we're going to update that replication. And why not? Let's start our lovely little stopwatch again. And we'll upgrade. Well, update even 
to UK South. Let's put it on premium SSD. Why not? And we'll save that. So while that's replicating, I want to talk a little bit about that um, the patching customization within Packer or AIB. I did not have a hundred percent success rate with that customization. Probably more like 60 or 70 percent. Now that's not a great hit rate. Um, I am looking into it. I will try and find out uh, what was going wrong. And um, if I do find out, I'll stick it in a future uh, video. Um, it may just be the particular combination of um, image and offer and the particular updates. At the moment, I have no idea, but, uh, but just something to watch out for. In a future episode, we are going to look at how to run some validation and um, make sure that the applications and the configuration that you wanted to apply actually has been applied and we're going to report that back um, to a system that we're going to look into later. All right, so um, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit and what we'll do once we've replicated to UK South is we're actually going to deploy a Windows Virtual Desktop host pool. So I'll speak in a few seconds. All right, now we can see that that replication has completed to UK South. Let's create a Windows Virtual Desktop host pool. So here we'll see we can use our shared image, latest version, do 10 VMs, standard SSD, put them on a VNet that has DNS resolution to my domain controller. And let's download a nice template for automation. We may well need that later. And we'll just fast forward whilst our host pool with all the VMs in is created. Just before that, actually, we can add an assignment. And there we have the host pool completely created with uh, 10 VMs all ready to be logged onto. So now we've got our workspace in our remote desktop client. I'm just going to change my settings so that I'm selecting the right display. And we're in. Have a quick look into apps and features. Get for Windows. FS Logics.
PowerShell. VS Code. So that is a full end-to-end, -end, starting from scratch, host pool created from a gallery marketplace image with all the apps installed, configured, and patched, and ready for users to log into and use. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe.